So one of the things that's so exciting to me about talking to um, Catherine Balsam Schwaber from Kintra today is this new model that we're seeing where we have corporates, large corporates like P&G being involved with venture-backed companies. And one of the things that's so unique about this is a venture-backed company that's smaller has essentially less to lose. You can spend a little, learn a lot. You can learn about your customers on a very intimate level through your digital communication and your community. And how amazing is that to then be able to filter it back potentially uh, to a large partner. But the key idea in what's happening in the space of menopause business is education, messaging, and community. Look, women want community. Women want to know if what they're experiencing, be it menopause symptoms or something else, is normal, is common. They want to not feel alone. This provides comfort. Healthcare providers are around, absolutely, but communities of other women going through symptoms and navigating this course is most important. I am most interested to hear the actual flavor of Kendra because I'm familiar with so many menopause companies that have really sprouted up over the past couple of years. And they all seem to bring a different vantage point and a different perspective. So I'm very anxious to hear Catherine. And we've seen that in other categories. We're used to there being a thousand shampoos on the shelf or 17 kinds of you know, detergent or whatever the case may be. It's really so exciting to me that now women are having many more choices. You often talk about some of the key factors that you like your patients to think about when they're facing menopause. Can you just share the sort of the categories you think about when you're helping patients with menopause? Absolutely. So first of all, this is, it's kind of like thinking about maybe a diet. You can't just have it happen one day and expect that that's going to be a long lasting situation. Managing the transition towards menopause and the menopausal years is a lifestyle choice. We talk about diet, we talk about exercise, we speak about stress reduction, which is huge. And then we also speak about managing the symptoms of menopause, whether it's hot flashes and night sweats, whether it's vaginal dryness, sexual function changes, whether it's mental fog or sleep issues. So these are all intertwined, but lifestyle modification really has to be the crux of the matter. And I think it's so important to understand like so many aspects of women's health, many, many different systems, both physiological and psychological and emotional are connected. So it's not like you can flip a switch and say, oh, I figured out menopause. It's a process and it really changes depending on what your symptoms are and requires, I think, a long range view. No question about it. Today's episode is sponsored by Kindra, a radical self-care company that makes estrogen-free essentials designed by women for women and thoughtfully designed to target and relieve the symptoms of the menopausal journey. Welcome to the Business of the V. Hello, friends and colleagues. I'm Dr. Alyssa Dweck. And I'm Rachel braun -Sherl. Each week, we bring you the most fascinating investors, inventors, entrepreneurs, academics, and healthcare practitioners who are making things happen in women's sexual and reproductive health. If you are a woman, know a woman, have a business, or care about your V health and wellness, fasten your seatbelts and listen in to another informative and inspiring episode. We are so excited to have our guest today, Catherine Balsam Schwaber, who is the CEO and founder of Kendra, which is taking a new approach in many different ways to menopause. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you so much. I am thrilled to be here. We are really happy to have you. Menopause is big discussion. It's big business. How did you get here? You, you started your career. You've had a long and successful career in other areas. How menopause and why now? 
Well, I had this funny habit of taking jobs that always uh, perfectly aligned with my life stage. So in my <laughs> training, I worked at MTV in the Hills era to date myself. In my 30s, I was at iVillage running marketing, the original women's community. And uh, that was when I was trying to get pregnant and I had my twins while I was there. And then... Um, when the kids were little, I ended up uh, getting recruited to Mattel, where I became the chief content officer when they were the perfect ages for Barbie and Hot Wheels. So that was awesome. And then <laughs> after that, I took, uh, I guess, a bit of a detour from my uh, life stage moment by moment planning. And NBC Universal bought a company that was based in Denver. And I went there to, I was the general manager of that company, it's called Craftsy. And when we came back to Los Angeles, I was about to turn 50. I was on my own perimenopausal journey, but I didn't know that that's what I, the journey I was on, like so many of us. And I felt like I, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to do what I had always been doing. And that I felt that this was the moment where I needed to make if I was going to make a shift in my career out of corporate, I needed to, to make it now. And so I started talking to people about what it would mean to change, you know, my, change my identity in so many ways, right? My, my career was so much a part of who I was and, and trying to think of doing something different was a, it was a pretty big shift. And at the same time, um, I hadn't been feeling great. I had been feeling this like sense of achiness all the time and weird stuff was happening to my hair and my skin was weird. And, you know, I Googled it and definitely thought that I was going to die. It turned out that my hormones were evolving with me and that I was in, you know, perimenopause, although my journey candidly from peri to post technically was very short um, because I stopped getting my period, you know, uh, pretty early on. And, um, and in that, those, the conversations that I was having, they led me to meet the team at M13, which is a, a big investment firm out in Los Angeles, who at the time was having a dialogue with Procter & Gamble about commercializing a line of menopause product. And essentially the three of us joined forces to launch what is now Kindra. And I was so fortunate to have the benefit of all of the scientific work and discovery of the Procter & Gamble scientists to have our first line of product be available and on the market, knowing that it was safe and effective before we even opened the doors. So that was really the, the birth of Kindra. And for me, it was, again, this like perfect alignment of my own life stage. And so much of what I was experiencing, which was around no information, you know, even the doctors that I was seeing at the time never said to me, hey, this might be perimenopause. <laughs> One doctor uh, told me that I had fibromyalgia and that I should take steroids and come back in six months. And I just felt like that wasn't right, that he was wrong because I, it just, it felt like the way I described it to him was it felt like something was wrong with my clock, but I didn't know what it was. And he didn't even say from that, like maybe it's perimenopause and, um, and that this was the perfect recipe of products that I knew would work, but also an opportunity to really deliver education and information to women that was readily available, right? So much of, of the way that we think about our mission is education on demand, if you will, of being able to get those kind of those basic resources when you are Googling to be able to get an answer that actually leads you to a path where you can feel more empowered than where I ended up, which was definitely dire. <laughs> well, one of the things that is always interesting to me is Whenever anyone talks to Alyssa, either in her office where they're the patient or professionally or in any of the work that they do, you know, the first thing I want to say is if you had gone to Dr. Dweck, you wouldn't have had the same experience. And yes. one of the reasons I think that's relevant is because it does speak to a big gap that we have in our education. 
you know, you know the numbers as well as I do, over a billion women will be in menopause by 2025. But Alyssa faces these questions and these patients every day. You know, often Alyssa, you say people come in and say, am I going crazy? Have you ever had anyone come in and say, like Catherine thought, am I dying? What's going on here? And do they often come with previous misdiagnoses? You know, luckily, I think this has changed over time because so many more practitioners are really having menopause on their brains right now, and it's becoming a much more cop, uh, you know, common topic of conversation. I think that you know what you're speaking to, Catherine, is this such a common disconnect between what you feel like, maybe your chronologic age. And yep. the fact that maybe generations right above ours really didn't talk about this so much. So it takes us by surprise uh, when these symptoms come about. And I really do appreciate what you talk about with Dr. Google, because of course people are gonna you know, look for information in the middle of the night when they've woken up sweating their guts out and they have a busy racing mind and they're going to see some fairly scary things. Um, so I think this uh, conversation has changed and people are becoming much more aware of the fact that perimenopause for many women can last four to eight years. We now know menopause in general is averaging uh, at about age 51 or 52. So there's a little bit more of a warning sign now, whether it's in the media or on wonderful educational sites like Kendra's. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, you know, there's always these lists in the media of, oh, well, here are the 34 or 38 symptoms of menopause, you know, so your itchy toenails could be a sign of menopause. And that's yeah. a joke, of course. But, you know, what do you find were the most important things for you at Kendra to address? Because, yeah. you know, it's a broad group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, out of the gate, we really focused on the areas that we thought I mean, the, that women were telling us were the foremost, let's call them disruptive aspects of menopause. The first being sleep disruption. You know, if you, can, if you don't sleep, nothing works. And so we've really put a lot of energy into thinking about sleep and not just from a supplement standpoint, but also from like delivering in, information about different rituals, right? It's sleep behavior, really protecting your, your sleep and, and finding ways to, to be on a path to have a healthy sleep regimen. The second is um, brain fog and focus. You know, a lot of women feel very unfocused. I mean, I definitely have felt that much more than I ever have in, in my life. Um, the third being hot flashes. You know, interestingly, I think hot flashes, um, it, it's changed over time. You know, we heard a lot about hot flashes in the beginning, and we've heard less and less actually about hot flashes as we've progressed in our own business, which which is interesting. And I think it's partially because it's the it's the visible hot flashes is the visible sign, and all of the other things that are going on with women are are invisible. And then the last one, vaginal dryness. So, you know, vaginal dryness is, I think one of the big topics for us that we have tried to, to talk about really head on because there is so little information. And I think that it's one of those aspects of menopause that women somehow think is just the new normal when it, you have many more options than you ever have had. You know, we have a uh, vaginal lotion with an, um, a patented applicator, which is amazing but it's just one option, right? We have women who are taking hormones and using our products simultaneously because all of our products are hormone free or estrogen free and they don't interact with anything else that you might take. So, so trying to create products that have a lot of flexibility and are highly accessible, I think is one of the, the major things that, that we really wanted to address. Yeah. I'd like to think that your statement about you're hearing less about hot flashes, you know, the absolutely iconic symptom of menopause, because there are newer, you mm. know, and, and particularly yeah. non-hormonal treatments to, uh, to manage this. So hopefully less conversation means better uh, attention to this matter. Mm. You know, in regard to menopause and, you know, based on uh, the way Rachel introduced this, uh, yes, women come in and they think they're going crazy because they can't focus, but I think that ties in so intricately with sleep 
or yeah. lack thereof, because that, you know, the first thing people go to is, oh my God, I must have Alzheimer's, which is so frightening. Yeah. Um, but really a lot of the menophog is due to interrupted and poor quality sleep. So that's a really uh, important subject. Yeah, it is. And I think it's one of those things where, you know, all my life, I was an incredible sleeper and I can still fall asleep very well, but I wake up, right. I wake up a lot during, during the night and you don't necessarily realize how much that disrupts your right, your sleep, even if you are so that's one of the things we hear a lot actually from our community is that this like multiple disruptions during the night from your body that really changes the quality of your, of your sleep, which is, it's a hard thing to overcome, I think. And then it contributes to really to everything, stress and anxiety. I mean, right. Waking everything. It, sleep is, um, is like the tip of, of the spear for so many issues. So one of the things that's so interesting about being in the space and having been in it from one perspective and Alyssa from another um, for so long is that the conversation and the language and the approach and the accessibility in this area has changed. There are a lot more players in the space, a lot more people talking about it. Um, we always talk about the rising tide raises all boats. Share with us what your particular perspective is in terms of your community, you're selling online, you're creating conversations. What is the Kindra voice, if you will? And what are you trying to communicate just at a very high level? At a very high level, it's about fostering more conversations and and really breaking down the stigma of menopause. You know, we just recently launched a new platform called uh, Couch Conversations, where we hosted with Gloria Steinem and Gail King a great conversation with a group of women talking about you know, why we feel, why we still feel, even when we have these conversations going on, why we still feel uncomfortable in certain circumstances, talking, you know, talking about menopause as if the conversation of menopause is the abnormal part, where really the abnormal part is, this is something that's happening to half of the population that we are really encouraged not to share with one another. And that so much of these conversations, you know, feel that they have to happen in secret. It's actually one of the, the things I thought was really interesting in that, in that couch conversation was sort of someone saying, well, we're all talking about it so much now. And the reality is there is a group of us who are really talking about it a lot, but we are a very small subset of the population. And when I communicate with community members all over the country, you know, they're still saying, this is the first time I've ever been able to have this conversation with someone, you know, and especially even through our customer service, you know, where they're talking to women live for the first time who are engaging them about a dialogue around, around painful sex, you know, and that, that they haven't been able to talk about it until now. And so I think that's where we think about, you know, our role is to open up that dialogue and then help you find solutions that really work. Well, one of the things that's so exciting, besides any day that I get to talk about this with smart people is a great day for me, but the impact, I just want to repeat what you said. You were talking to Gloria Steinem <laughs> about menopause, and there's a couple of things um, about that. One, she's an icon in so many ways when yes. it comes to being a woman, talking about being a woman, and opportunity, and now, you know, in her seventh decade, uh, I think it's more than that. <laughs> so now, now in her, you know, she's now she's 80, yes. let's say that mm -hmm. this is the first time she's publicly speaking about it, which speaks to how impressive she still is. Yeah. Number one, how relevant she still is and how much this had been something we didn't talk about. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, Gail King, who's a prominent face on the news and yeah. Michelle Obama talking about it. Yep. I know that we are the tip of the iceberg, but we are making progress at chipping away at that iceberg so that in common conversation, or at least public conversations and in the media, we're hearing it more and more. And yep. to me, that's the first step to making any progress. At Business of the V, we focus on the most important issues facing women and their sexual and reproductive health. At the top of that list is menopause. 
So this episode of Business of the V is sponsored by Kendra, a modern health and wellness company that offers estrogen-free essentials to relieve the most disruptive signs of menopause, including vaginal dryness, hot flashes, disrupted sleep, and more. The line of essentials is focused on the peri to post-menopausal journey and includes a daily vaginal lotion, as well as a range of supplements for sleep enhancement, focus boosting, and daily wellness. To try these natural solutions to menopause, use promo code BOVPODCAST at checkout for 20% off your first order or subscription. So here's today's hot flash, and this astounds me every time I read this statistic. The American College of OBGYNs estimates that 6,000 U.S. women reach menopause every day. That means over 2 million women per year are entering menopause. Yes, no, that, that's absolutely true. And that's how we think about our couch conversations. You know, we've been uh, so fortunate that many of our influencer friends also have followed suit with their own couch conversations that they're sharing on social media on their own, right? They're bringing other women together inside their community to be able to have those conversations and then, you know, being able to, to talk about it. You know, that's one of my favorite lines is that menopause is not like fight club. The first rule of menopause is you have ah. to talk about menopause, right? That, um, that it's really important that we that we are all vocal so that we create space for other women to to feel like they can have these conversations and you know and with not just with other women but with their partners and their physicians and maybe their colleagues at work I mean I, I think that that's where things really begin to get tricky for women is feeling that somehow it's not it's not diminishing them I you know I think that um you know, your point about chronological age, you know, is so important in this dialogue because one of, you know, one of the big aha moments for me in thinking about how to connect with women as a, as a business was that, um, you know, the only person in the media I had ever heard talk about menopause was uh, Blanche Devereaux in the Golden Girls, if you remember Blanche Devereaux. We are and definitely dating ourselves. We've gone I know. to Fight Club, <laughs> Glorious Tynum, and Golden Girls. I know. It's okay, because I feel like the people listening to this uh, are going to identify completely. And um, and so in that, uh, in the year that the show came out was 1985, and her character was a 53-year-old woman. So in my mind, Blanche Devereaux was much older than 53. And at the time that we were forming Kindra was when, you know, J-Lo was doing the halftime show at the Super Bowl as a 50-year-old woman, right? And so I think the idea of our, our chronological age versus menopause, it, it, it's like doesn't compute in the way that we see ourselves as young. I mean, I've still got little kids and... And so I, I don't, you know, I wasn't thinking in my head, I was thinking about women in, in retirement communities who are at the beginning of their menopausal journey. And I, you know, I didn't realize that that could, could be me. And so that was, I think, a big part of the educational gap in my mind is this idea, this mental picture of what you think, what culture has told us that menopause is versus the reality, which is, it's a, you know, just another hormonal change in our body. As women, we have been dealing with hormonal changes all of our lives, every month, and, and that this is just another one to, you know, to tackle and adapt to. And fortunately, there's more information and more support and more solutions than there's ever been. You know, um, that leads me into my question about just sort of the um, flavor, if you will, of what the Kindra experience provides for the community. You know, there's a, thankfully, a pretty competitive landscape out there with lots of different companies now really embracing the whole menopause, uh, uh, you know, population, which I think is great. Yeah. Some medicalize this, you know, yeah. menopause, oh my God, it's menopause, go hide under a rock. Others, you know, are just free and easy, go do yoga and that'll be the end of that. And I'm just sort of, you know, we've got the, the goops out there and, you yeah. know, Gwyneth Paltrow, who is 
you know, really, I think has really changed this landscape yeah. as well. How, how does Kindra fit into this? What's the flavor, if you will? Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's a little in between, you know, I feel like there is so much that that you can do for yourself that doesn't have to come from a medical solution. I mean, you should always mm -hmm. see your doctor if you are concerned about anything happening in your body, obviously, but, or your medical provider, whoever that is. But the, the idea that you can find solutions and steps to take that don't require medical intervention when it comes to your body. You know, a lot of health and wellness is, is a, a path that you have to follow. I mean, one of the things that I find myself talking about quite a bit is, is the thing about menopause is you kind of have to do the work, right? You kind of have to do the work for yourself to figure out what's going to work for you. So what, you know, when you talk about 34 or 38 things that could be happening in your body, no woman is having the same experience. So you have to kind of self-identify, your doctor isn't going to be able to do that for you. You have to say, this is what's happening in my body. And then based on what works for me and what doesn't, here is the regimen I'm going to create for myself. So I think about us as helping to curate that regimen in a way, which is to give you the information and the tools and the support through community for finding that path. And then we have products that you know we know work, but there are other products as well. And, and we're not shy about helping you find some of those other products, right? In categories that we don't necessarily focus on. I'm one of the lucky ones because as a physician, I feel like I have such a big war chest now to <laughs> offer yeah. people who are suffering from different symptoms, whether it's, uh, you know, lifestyle management, which obviously is part of your core, uh, you know, herbal supplements, like what you're offering. Yeah hormone therapy, which is not the big, bad, ugly thing that everybody thinks it is because it's really necessary for some people. So. so one of the things that's been a game changer in this space, besides the huge number of founders and more investment dollars going into the space, is that companies who haven't been in sexual health or wellness in this space are now in it. Can you talk to us about the connection with P&G and you know, you've been in corporate America for a long time. Does that to you reflect the sea change that it does to me? Um, it does, certainly. I mean, I think the idea that they were interested in helping women solve problems related to their overall well-being is not a surprise, right? That that is very much, particularly for PNG, the space that they are in, that, um, you know, that we have found ourselves actually as the business so invested in women's sexual health, I think is, you know, us following our customer into the areas where she feels like she needs the most, you know, she needs the most support. And I think the marriage that they are trying to explore between venture backed business and corporate giant is, is fascinating because it's very hard, like speaking from my old world, it's very hard to be able to experiment and, and let the consumer lead you the way that, that startups can from a corporate seat. Because, you know, even in some of my previous roles, the economics of those, the size of those businesses really don't allow you to launch anything that isn't like at global scale. <laughs> so, right. So when you think about us starting from zero and still, you know, while we are growing very, very rapidly, still very small in comparison to, you know, the way that you would think about an Olay or any, you know, any of those products within their portfolio, that it is, uh, I hope, you know, a sea change, not just for the situation that I'm in, but for many of these businesses and the overall health and wellness of, you know, women around the globe, because certainly our products and a lot of the products that are coming on the market will benefit women, you know, in our second act in a lot of different ways and in a lot of different, you know, a lot of different places. And, and there's also, you know, work, especially around sexual wellness and health for women in this phase of life 
that goes beyond the thing we call menopause into osteoporosis and heart health and mental health. I mean, that there's a lot of work still to be done there where I feel sometimes that again, like we're just at the tipping point of a lot of the opportunity that will come to support women in new ways that hasn't even yet to be explored. And I do have hope that then, you know, businesses like PNG and others will be able to pick up those, right, those products that are so magnificent and then, you know, support getting them all over, you know, all over the world. You know, hopefully in, in a short time, the fact that people weren't talking about menopause will be a distant memory. And one of the things that's also been really helpful in this space, and I always compare it to, you know, for those of us who had kids quite a while ago, you know, there was no such thing as maternity and fertility benefits the way we have them now, um, where you might be nursing in a dark broom closet. And now they're using maternity and fertility benefits as a way to attract talent. What's right. really right. exciting to me in the business space is that the conversation has started about that because 20% of the workforce is in menopause. And what are we doing? What are companies doing to maintain a competitive advantage by keeping these people who in general, by the time they're in menopause, have a lot of experience. They have a lot of years under their belt. They have a lot of wisdom and they could be making valuable contributions. Yeah. Yeah. We actually did an employee toolkit uh, that we published on the site that was incredibly well received. And um, for that very reason, which was we, you know, we began to hear a lot of anxiety in the community about women who were possibly having to go back to the office for the first time in a while and experiencing some of the right effects of their changing body maybe having hot flashes you know in public where they really had been right when we were all living on zoom permanently that you were able to to sort of manage in your home and as part of that we put together a toolkit for women who were going back to the office just on you know tips and ways that you can manage even if you you know guides on how you could try and talk to your colleagues or even your your boss if you felt that that was something that you wanted to do. And we got a lot of incredibly great feedback from the community about just giving them the language. I mean, that's one of the big things that I think you said was that the language didn't exist. I mean, we've heard it repeatedly from community members. We did a program with mothers and daughters. And one of the daughters said like, pretty angrily to her mom, like, why didn't you ever talk about this? And her mother said, I, I didn't have the words. I didn't have the language. No one had ever spoken to me about it. So I kind of just thought this was the way it was. And, um, and so I think in all of these circumstances, you know, it, it's that too. How do you, how do you talk to men that you work with in the office about a hot flash? And then what do you do, you know, in a meeting, do you stay in the meeting and have the hot flash? Do you leave the meeting? You know, what, what is right for you in that moment, which I think is also right. It, all of this is so personal to your own comfort level that it's a lot, you know, again, it like comes back to having to do the work for yourself and figure out really what is the, you know, the right thing for you and, and then like owning it, you know, which is, uh, which is where you feel more empowered, right? When you have the information and you have the tools you'll feel better in your own skin, no matter what. I think we have a long way to go before we're speaking to our boardroom colleagues about uh, whether or not you want to maintain your uh, <laughs> <laughs> stature because of a hot flash. So yeah. I'm curious what kind of products or uh, you know, new tools are coming down the pike for Kindred? Yeah, well, so we have um, some new products. I mean, we've been listening very, very carefully to our customers and I think there are a few areas, especially when it comes to vaginal dryness, um, that has been an area where there's been so little innovation and support where we are exploring uh, new opportunities there that we're really, really excited about. And then, um, of course, you know, while the demand and discussion for hot flash is not, doesn't feel like it's at its peak, there's always demand for new solutions when it comes to hot flashes. So that's another area that we're exploring. And we're going to continue with our couch conversations initiative with other, um, 
um, friends of Gloria's and uh, we're really, really excited about that because it feels like it's having a big impact and, um, you know, can, continuing to build the business in all the ways that we can and keep the conversation going. Do you see expanding into retail at any point, bricks and mortar? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's, you know, as a company that sells products, it's a pretty natural progression at some point. You know, one of the things that we have found through some of our partners is that it's still a pretty high touch experience, right? It's hard because the education is so much a part of the work that we do and that women don't necessarily know what it is that they want to buy. You know, I think it's very different than beauty. So right when you see a lipstick in your feed, you can say, is this the right lipstick for me? When you see a menopause product in your feed, we still get uh, people writing in like, why am I getting this ad? You know, and, and so, uh, you know, the idea that these kinds of products even exist is, is still new for, you know, the vast majority of customers. So I think that when we think about it, it's really in high touch environments for now, where we have an opportunity to educate you and provide you with solutions in the same experience. And over time, I think you'll be able to go to aisle and sort of know what, you know, what choices there are for you. And I think that there are, you know, some of our friends are doing a good job of building the aisle and, you know, now, because it's, it's hard to figure out how to do that when our products cross so many different categories, it's not the way retail is designed right, to support women in that way. So I think we are fortunate that uh, there will be opportunity, you know, for us down the road. One of the things that you and Alyssa both mentioned is now that there are more opportunities, you might see some product switching, but one of the things that differentiates menopause from lipstick or maybe buying toys for your kids in your previous life is that many times this is a new behavior that a yeah. consumer is adding. Yeah. She might not be replacing one lubricant for another or mm -hmm. one supplement for another. She might be actually thinking about this for the first time and she's tiptoeing into this category, which is one of the reasons, as you mentioned, that education is so important. Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely true. And I, I think that, um, you know, one of the things that you don't see as much in this category is uh, like exact products you know, many of the same exact products. I think that that's part of, part of the beauty of this is the, the lack of innovation has given all of us an opportunity to kind of try different flavors, as you said, of how, you know, how we can create options for women in this category. And, um, you know, and that it, it does take some time, I think, to figure out what is right, you know, right for you and right for your body, because um, sometimes, you know, a cooling product will really work for you. Sometimes it will not. And, and I think that that also comes down to hormones, right? It's really so much about your, how your body responds to a lot of this stuff that just takes time to, to find the right, you know, the right choice. Well, the good news is um, we're never going to run out of customers <laughs> because this is uh, one of those things like, what do they say? Death and taxes, menopause is going to happen. <laughs> so right. we might as well embrace it. Um, I would like to see menopause Barbie because mm -hmm. I think that would be a really good idea. So uh, shout out to Mattel there. Um, but it's been a pleasure to speak to you and uh, always interesting. Uh, you've given me so much information to think about and uh, process for my patients. So thank you for that. And it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. I love being here and talking to both of you. It is always fascinating for me too, uh, with your depth of knowledge and all the great uh, partners that you talk to. So thanks for having me. Don't forget, subscribe to our podcast at businessofthev.com for the latest trends and trendsetters in women's health and business.